Good evening and welcome to our evening service at Patuxent Baptist Church. Please allow me to offer some helps for this service. Like, share, comment, and repost often. Uh, like and subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube pages. Get the latest messages, devotionals, and other encouraging online content. Please continue to visit PatuxentBaptistChurch.org slash livestream as we're adding new content daily. If you have a prayer request, fill out the form we have at PatuxentBaptistChurch.org slash prayer. I hope you, this morning's message with Brother Harding was a blessing to you, and we asked him again to uh, speak this evening and really present his ministry, give us a testimony of the things that have been going on related to uh, the most recent events in our country and around the world, and also kind of give us an update on the ministry, Mission to America. We're thankful for the Hardings. Uh, Brother and Mrs. Harding been such a blessing to us and a blessing to uh, the Connor family, and we're so thankful that they can uh, be with us here tonight. And so we asked Brother Harding to give us uh, just a quick word for the Lord related to this. But before he does that, let me mention the God and Country online service that Brother Harding is going to be hosting April 20th and 21st at 6 p.m. So Monday and Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Uh, on Brother Harding's Facebook page, and he'll be live on Facebook April 20th and 21st. Now let's uh, hear from Brother Harding. Well, it's good to be back with you this evening through, again, the technology of live streaming. And we're live and we're streaming to you. And so take your Bibles, go with me to 1 Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. Because, again, we're living in some very unique times, unprecedented times. That means something like this. This COVID-19 epidemic has never happened in our lifetime. There have been instances like this in the past, but we've not seen them. And back in the 1918, 1919, we had the Spanish flu and had over 600,000 Americans die from that. But we've never seen anything like this before. And so God says in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. We're going to use this scripture as kind of like a jumping off point to have a little greater understanding of the times and taking God's word and applying it to the world and the times in which we live. So let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you again now for loving us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for, Father, how you, we can take your word and apply it and to the world in which we live and be able to have some biblical common sense uh, about us, to have a biblical worldview, filter everything that comes into our life and everything that we say goes out to the world and to those people that listen, again, through and by thy word. And so, Father, bless now to take in a very special way, articulate once again my speech, clarify my thoughts, but most of all, through and by your Holy Spirit, that you would speak to me and through me and dwell me, Lord, and Father, do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. For you, you are able, Lord. And so, Father, we ask this in the precious name of your Son and our Savior. By the authority, Heavenly Father, that's in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, believing. Amen. And so, I've been asked this question uh, time and time again these last several weeks. Uh, what's going on, Brother Harding? What do you think is happening uh, here uh, in our nation from a viewpoint of Capitol Hill. And this is what I tell them. I've talked to senators and congressmen. I've talked to these people that are actually making the laws that we are supposed to abide by. I have seen what the president and vice president are saying. And you know, they're all saying the same thing. They're saying that they're kind of feeling their way through this because no one's ever had this challenge before. And so in these unprecedented times, of course, that we're supposed to have an understanding, we need to look to God's word and realize this, that the only reason we even have our country, the only reason we had 56 men that signed the Declaration of Independence were because of God's men and God's people. And so what do we do uh, during this time? Well, one thing I think we do in the sequestering of us and our families and the fact that we can't go out and the social distancing and all the rest of it, we need to look at this at a time where we can come closer to God. 
that we can spend more time with God. I, I have a uh, fairly lengthy prayer list that I pray through every day, but for the first time in my life, I prayed through my prayer list out loud with my wife. And uh, we wept, and it took uh, quite a while to get through that prayer list. But she looked at me, and she said, that's what you pray through every day? I said, yes, it is. We started this national prayer call for America. And we, now we have hundreds of people calling in from all of the United States, even Alaska in Hawaii. And again, we're moving closer to God. And I believe that God has allowed this to bring us closer to him so that when it's over, when he, of course, that has the power of death and life in his hands, takes care of this coronavirus, that we can come out of it better Christians. I want to be a better Christian. I hope you're not just spending time at home watching television and eating Lucky Charms, even though they're magically delicious. I hope you're actually doing something that will touch eternity. I hope you're praying because, you know, prayers, they outlive a lifetime. Prayers outlive decades. Prayers that even will outlive this world that will come to an end one day and God will create a new world. And our prayers touch eternity. And so I believe this. I believe that in seeing all of our leadership really kind of groping for what to do, we need to be praying for them. We need to be praying for the president, the vice president, the 22 members of the COVID task team. Did you know there's a COVID force led by the vice president and a lot of cabinet members? I have that list. It'll be on our website, Mission to America, missiontoamerica.us. 22 people that we need to be praying for we need to take this seriously. But I truly believe this. I believe that God is bringing us to an area in our culture that he's getting ready to do something really big. And I truly believe this. First and foremost, a revival in our hearts bringing us closer to him. And then a revival in our nation. You think about this. Churches at one time, maybe running 20 to 30, now they have 500 people tuning into their live stream. So the gospel is getting out in an amazing way. People that at one time were uh, attending one church service, now my wife and I the other night, actually on Sunday, we tuned into, I think, three or four different church services in the evening. We had a drive-in service in the morning, but we attended, uh, we said, well, now let's go to this service and this service and this service. And, and it was wonderful because we spent the whole evening hearing preaching. And, and how many people that wouldn't darken the door of a church are now tuning in and listening to the gospel preached by those people that perhaps have churches nearby them. And so, I think, in my opinion, this is a very exciting time to live for a Christian. I think this also, God makes the brightest lights for the darkest nights. And he's allowed us to live for such a time as this and to do things now that we couldn't do before. I mean, just uh, 10 years ago, we couldn't live stream. And I don't know how many people this is reaching but I'll guarantee you this. There's millions of people out there that are tuning in to Bible studies and to preaching services. And and so I'm excited when God basically puts an end to this. I believe we as Christians need to be ready to run forward to a harvest of souls being saved. I mean, we need to get excited about it and start planning for it now. And special events, I'm having a special event on Monday and Tuesday uh, this next week, uh, just uh, two days from now at six o'clock online, God and Country, where I'm going to be going through the Constitution because every pastor is going to have to make his own decision as to when he opens up his church to bring the congregants, to bring his people back and start congregating in person.
person once again. And each pastor needs to know the legalities and the guidelines for his particular district and or city and or state. And we need to understand what our rights are so that we can stand for these constitutional rights that we have been given and trusted with for the gospel's sake by people that have died on battlefields all over the world. So we can, when necessary, correct those people that may be trying to overreach in saying that we are not essential. I believe we're essential. I believe the church is essential. Uh, Walmart, I go to Walmart and get food. I go to church and get spiritually fed. And uh, actually that's more important uh, for a Christian to be spiritually fed than physically fed. And so as we're looking through all of these things going on and, and uh, gauging them from a biblical worldview, I think we need to be excited that God has allowed us to live at, and during this time frame and then be readying ourselves to be studying, uh, to be uh, getting closer to God through the reading of His Word, through uh, our prayer life and, and through just simply understanding that the Lord is working. And I truly believe this. I believe that very, very possible we are getting so close to a third great awakening, to a national revival. Uh, and look, I don't know how much time we have, but whatever time we do have, we need to redeem that time because we know the days are evil. And how we redeem that time is by touching eternity. And see, God gives us time, the most valuable thing we have. That's a gift from God. How we use that time is our gift to God. He gives us a time. We can waste it or we can use it for His honor and glory. We live in, as I said this morning, perilous times. But hey, that's all right because Christians thrive during these times. And it's time to reach out to people that are really searching for an answer right now because they've seen the whole world basically turn upside down and they want to know the purpose of life. Hey, we know the answer to their question. We know the truth. Truth, as I always say, has a name. His name is Jesus Christ and the gospel that he came and died on the cross and was buried, rose again the third day as we just commemorated and celebrated this last Sunday. Rose again and sits on the right hand of the throne of God making intercession for us. So, may we understand a biblical worldview gives an appreciation of what God has done in the past, what God is doing right now, and an acknowledgement of what God is going to do. So let's acknowledge that and let's get excited about that. Don't say, oh, woe is me, woe is me, I don't have enough TP, okay? No, don't, don't go that route. Say, hey, God, thank you for allowing me to live in such a time as this where people are wondering what's going on and we can tell them the purpose in life and what is beyond this life through and by the salvation that's in the Son of God. God the Son, and Jesus Christ. And so, let's have an understanding of the times. Let us as God's people be that tribe of Issachar. And even though we may not be in the majority, may I say this, you're always in the majority when you stand with truth, with God. And so let's understand where we stand, and let's get ready to run forward to the harvest of souls when this is over. And may God bless you, and I hope that this helps you. I'm going to end with this one verse, Philippians 2.15, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that ye may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. So let us pray for the president, for the vice president, for the cabinet members, for the task force, for our members of Congress, for their staff members, and for all of the governors and mayors and pastors 
that are going to be making some very important decisions in the coming weeks. May God bless you. Heavenly Father, bless now what's been said, we ask, in the precious name of your Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to understand that prayer is the citadel that we wage war for you and against the dark one, dear God, the devil. Help us to understand we pray from a position of victory. We pray to victory. We pray in victory. And thank you that we have the victory and faith is the victory that overcomes the world, that faith in you. For we ask it in the precious name of your Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And by the power and the authority that's in His name, we thank you, Lord. Amen.